Focusing on continuous functions, we've learned the informal and the formal definition, and we are trying to work some examples of these. I shown you two examples in the last video. Let's move on to two more examples in this video. So we are trying to determine whether our given function is continuous for the specified value of x. In this example, our specified value is x equals negative 1 of my piecewise function here, where my separator is at negative 1. So again, if we want to prove that this is continuous, we have to prove all three properties hold. If we find out it is discontinuous, we just have to prove which property does not hold. If you do not know where to start, I suggest start by using just your first property, property A. That asks, is our function at our given x value defined or not? Well, if we're looking at piecewise functions and we're trying to figure out where it's defined at, we look at the or equal to. And so in this case, it happens to be the second piece. So I plug it into my second part of this piecewise function. So negative 1 squared minus 3. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. When I subtract 3, I get negative 2. I don't have any problems at this piece. So, so far, we believe that our function is continuous. Let's move on to our second property, which asks, is the limit as x is approaching our x value of our function, does it exist? Since this is a piecewise function and our value at question is where our pieces are separated, that means we have to check the limit from x is approaching negative 1 from the left and make sure that meets up with the limit as x is approaching negative 1 from the right. So basically, we have to plug in negative 1 to both of these pieces and make sure that they match up. So the limit from the left means all of my values smaller than negative 1, so I plug it into my first piece. That gives me negative 1 minus 1, which gives me negative 2. If I want the limit from the right, I look at all my values larger than negative 1, which means I plug it into my second piece. I've already done this work. I did it in part A, so I don't need to do any more work. I see that it comes up to negative 2. Since my left hand and my right hand limit match, that means my overall limit matches here and means that my answer comes up to be negative 2. These values here gives me this value here. So I don't have any problems at that part, which means this proves that this part holds. So let's move on to property C, which says, does our answers from part A and part B match? In part A, we found that f of negative 1 is equal to negative 2. In part B, we found the limit as x is approaching negative 1 of our function is equal to negative 2. Since those values match, that means that property C holds. So we just proved that all three of our properties hold, which means our function is continuous at x is equal to negative 1. If you would like to see the visual that goes along with this, that is this visual here. Our C value in our problem was negative 1. We saw that our one piece came up to here, which was negative 2. And we saw our second piece came up to be the exact same value. So our left-hand piece and our right-hand piece match in the middle. And so since everything meets up, that means this guy is continuous at x equals negative 1. I have one more example of this type of function. Determine whether my given function of f of x equals x squared plus 7 is continuous for the specified value of x, in this case, negative 2. If you don't know where to start, I always start with just property A. Is my function defined at negative 2? Well, I just need to substitute negative 2 in there to see what happens. 
I don't have anything funky going on here. I don't have any problems whatsoever. So that means part A holds. Part B, we want to know does the limit as x is approaching negative 2 of our function exist? Well, if I'm trying to do a finite limit at negative 2, we know the first step is just to substitute in negative 2 for our function. Basically, it's the exact same work that we did in step number A. So we don't have any work to do. We figure out that we get out the answer 11, which means nothing weird going on here. So part B holds. Notice the answers that we got for part A and part B match. Of course they should because we did the exact same work in part A and part B. So that means part C, our function at negative 2, gives us the 11, which is the exact same thing as the limit as x is approaching negative 2 of our function. So that means part C holds. Since all three of my properties hold, that means f of x is continuous at x equals negative 2. And this is one of those examples that's almost too easy. It seems like it's difficult because basically we did just one step of this problem here, and that happens to be the same work for all three of my steps. If you want to see the visual of this here, this is this example here, it's basically just your typical function. I don't have anything weird going on, so we see my function is continuous all the way through for any c value, and specifically in our problem, which was the c value of negative 2. So this is continuous everywhere, especially whatever x value that we're looking for. I'm going to stop this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to still be working homework problem examples, but we're going to switch it up a little bit. So our instructions are going to be different than this set of instructions that we saw on this in the last video.